If someone were to ask me, which full disclosure, nobody did, but if someone were to ask me what I felt was the biggest obstacle or, or hurdle or, or mistake that plagues beginner photographers today, I'd say it's the, the dreaded act of over editing. And <clears throat> excuse me, I actually probably shouldn't even relegate this to just beginners is this creeps up from time to time with, with every skill set of photographer from beginners all the way to professionals. And, and I'm certainly no stranger to this either as I've always had a difficult time seeing certain colors, which as you can expect, makes uh, editing photos a bit of a cat and mouse game at times, but color is one of those is, uh, is only really one aspect of over editing. You also have things like too bright or too dark an exposure, too much or too little contrast, uh, too much shadow recovery, too much sharpening or clarity, too strong a vignette, and of course, overly saturated colors. And the list goes on and on from there. But in this video, I wanna share with you something that has greatly helped me out when determining if I've gone too far or maybe I haven't gone far enough with an edit in hopes that this is something that can help you out moving forward as well as this little tool, it already resides within Lightroom for, for all of us to use. So this is an image from a, a couple fall seasons ago, one of my favorite uh, waterfalls in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. I won't run through the entire edit, but um, you can see what I did in the calibration section here. I am gonna add a little bit of a tint to the shadow area here, maybe a little bit of magenta tint, nothing too crazy, but maybe just something to about, maybe right there looks good. And then I'll come up here to the basic section just so you can see what I did right through there. Now, something kind of a, a, an easy way to add depth to a photograph um, through, through post-processing is if, if you think about it, if you're looking at a scene, anything that's in the foreground has got two qualities that really separates it from the area in the background. So things that are closer to your eye naturally have uh, more vibrance. They're, they're, the colors are naturally more saturated. And areas that are closer to your eye also appear to have more contrast than areas that are farther away from your eye. So if you edit your photo with that in mind, that's a great way to create additional depth in your photograph. And I'll show you what I mean real quick. So what I wanna do is I like how this area right through here is very contrasty. There's a lot of, of uh, very punchy oranges and reds all through here. So these colors are definitely very vibrant. And I want to kind of just reduce some of the contrast back through here and reduce a little bit of this uh, the saturation, maybe even add a little bit of negative dehaze, just to kind of make that background not quite as punchy, if you will, as the foreground. And that's naturally gonna create this illusion of depth. So so a great way to do that is I'm going to come up here to the filter section. You can already see I put a, a, a filter over the, uh, the actual water flow. If I toggle that on and off, you can just see what that has done. Just real subtle. But I'm going to come up here to create new mask, linear gradient. Let's just drag this across this area right through here. I think that looks good. And let's reduce the contrast a fair amount. Nothing crazy, not like that. But if I rock this back and forth, you can see what it's doing. So maybe something about there. Maybe we'll even reduce the saturation just a little bit. We can uh, reduce the clarity a little bit as well because that's something else. If you think about it, things that are closer to your eye naturally appear sharper. That they, You naturally have a little bit more detail than something that is, say, 20 or 30 or 50 yards farther from your eyes. So when you're editing photos, if you kind of keep that in mind, that areas that are in your foreground, more saturated colors, it's gonna appear sharper, it's gonna appear more contrasty, and areas that are farther from your eye are gonna have the exact opposite of those qualities. So if I reduce the clarity back there, reduce the contrast, reduce the saturation just a touch, maybe we could even add a little bit of de negative dehaze. You can see what that's doing. Let's just, uh, just a touch. And maybe we could even reduce the shadows a little bit, because if you think about that as well, things that are farther from your eye, the shadows might appear a little bit darker. So doing that, and let's toggle this on and off. So this is before and after, before and after, and it's a very, very subtle difference. I'm just gonna bring this contra contrast down just a little bit more, maybe a little bit more negative dehaze and just a little bit more negative saturation. And once again, this is before and after, before and after. A very subtle difference, but now you can clearly see that the area in the foreground has those more punchy colors, it's more contrasty versus the area in the background. And that just creates just a very subtle illusion that the image has, uh, has depth to it. So I think that that looks pretty good. Let's double click this and let's just name this background. And now I'm gonna add one more mask. I'm gonna kind of do some, I just really wanna open up these shadows down here a little bit. So I'm just gonna drag this up through here to about like that. Maybe not quite that far, let's do this. I don't want that transition zone to be too, too soft. And let's just open up these shadows just a little bit to about right there. Maybe increase the exposure a little bit. I don't really wanna affect those leaves as much. So I'm just gonna apply a luminance mask to this. So let's come up here and let's intersect this mask with a luminance range. 
and I want to target the shadows. So I'm just going to hold down my option key and drag from the right over to the left until everything that I want to target is in red. And let's create a little bit of a fall off just so it's not so harsh. Uh, I think something about like that. So all that area in the bottom left hand, or bottom right hand corner that is in red is going to receive the edit and the area that is in white, which is the leaves, is not going to receive the edit. And that's exactly what I want to do. And if I toggle this on and off, this is before and after, before and after. And as I rock this back and forth, you can see that it, it's really not affecting the leaves nearly as much as it was before. It's really just affecting those shadow areas and those greens are really starting to come out as well. I think I'm going to pump up the clarity a touch because once again, areas in the foreground are going to appear a little bit sharper. I'm going to add some texture there. Maybe not that much clarity. Something to about right there. I'm not going to make the area, I don't want to make the, the bottom right hand corner any more saturated than it already is. But that foreground area now has more contrast, more saturated colors. It's definitely sharper than everything in the background. So that's creating that sense of depth. But I really like the, the way that that looks right there. Now, one of the biggest issues with photo editing is the fact that you lose your frame of reference. Now, I can toggle this on and off. Let me just close down this area here. Oops, close. Now, I can go to the raw file here by hitting the, uh, the backslash key. So this is raw, and this is where we are now. So this is before and after. Now, that is helpful, but kind of using the raw file as a frame of reference isn't the, the best, um, I guess, frame of reference to determine if you've gone too far with a particular edit. And this tool that I'm about to show you, it, it's so simple, you've probably already used it before, but it gives you the ability to create a frame of reference and it's super, super powerful. So I'm gonna come up here to a library, right click, and I'm gonna come down here to create virtual copy. I'm gonna right click again and create virtual copy. You can see that's in the copy there. So now we actually, this will eventually show the, uh, the edits as soon as my computer catches up, but we basically have three files now and all of them are exactly the same. So what I'm gonna do with this first virtual copy, you can see it says copy three here, and then this one says copy four. So I'm gonna come over here to copy three and I'm gonna hit develop. And what I like to do, and the, and the biggest issue I have is determining if I've gone too far or I haven't gone far enough. And I like to use something that I call the 50% rule. So the things that I struggle with the most, and everybody struggles with things a little bit differently, but I struggle with determining if colors are too saturated. I, did, I struggle with determining if the an image has too little contrast or too much contrast. And I also struggle with white balance as well. So knowing that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to contrast, and the 50% rule is basically, if this is plus 30 and I wanna boost it 50%, I'm gonna take it to plus 45 because 50% of 30 is 15, 15 plus 30 is 45. So that is what I'm gonna do there. Contrast is up to 45. I'm gonna come down here to the calibration section and I'm gonna boost the saturation level of, of all these also 50%. So this one is gonna go up to around 29. Doesn't have to be exact. This is gonna go up to about the same amount. This is gonna go up to around 30 as well. And then I'm gonna come up here to the uh, the saturation, not the saturation, but the vibrance. I'm gonna bring that up just a little bit as well. Take this contrast up just a touch here as well. And the ultimate goal with this copy, with this virtual copy, is to create a more punchy version than the original. So I'm gonna leave that right there. I think I'm going to actually just warm this white balance up a little bit as well. My issue with white balance isn't so much relegated to the tint but it's always the, the actual color temperature. So I have a hard time determining if images are too cool versus images that are too warm or just right. So I warm this one up just a little bit. I'm gonna come back up here to the library module, open this up, and I'm gonna come over here to this virtual copy. And now on this one, the goal with this copy is to make a more subdued version of the original. And I'm once again, I'm gonna use that same 50% rule. I'm gonna come up here to contrast and I'm gonna take this from plus 30 to plus 15. And I'm gonna come down to the calibration section and I'm gonna cut all these by 50%. Every one of these down to about 10 right there. And I'm gonna come up here to the basic section and I'm gonna reduce the, the warmth of this one just a little bit as well to something I think about right there. And now I'm gonna come up here to library and let's look at all three that we have here. And this gets back to what I was saying earlier about frame of reference. When, as you're going through your edits, you know, you, you might add, I don't know, maybe 10 or, or 20 different edits to a file. 
and you can very easily lose that frame of reference. And that's where, at least for me personally, that's where I begin to struggle with whether or not I've gone too far or I haven't gone far enough. But understanding what you struggle with the most is how this kind of technique is definitely gonna shine. So I'm gonna come up here and click these three, and I'm gonna hit the shortcut key N, and that's gonna put it in survey mode, and then I'm gonna hit the shortcut key L, and that's gonna put it in lights out. And if you hit L one more time, that'll actually black everything out around it. And now that you can see all three of these, now you have the ultimate frame of reference. You have one version, that's the original edit. You have another version, which is a more kind of souped up version, more punchy, more contrasty, more overly saturated. And then you have a third edit that is a more subdued version than the original. And now you can go back and you can look and see, is there one of these images that looks better than the other? Is there an area that looks better than the other? I know that we did a local adjustment in the upper left-hand corner. We did a local adjustment in the bottom right hand corner. And how do those look now? Looking at this version, I know clearly that this is the, the less subdued version. And it definitely looks like it's lacking a little bit of contrast to me. I think that this area back here is really starting to look washed out now. And this is the more souped up version as well. I kind of like the, the way that the trees look in this one, which kind of tells me that this is definitely the original version that we edited but this is gonna enable me to go back to my original edit and maybe boost up the colors just a little bit more or maybe not have as much negative dehaze or maybe bring that contrast back just a little bit. The, the bottom right hand corner through here, these oranges and these reds are starting to look a little bit too, too saturated to me and maybe even a little bit in the original edit. I kind of like the way that they look right here in this uh, more subdued version, but you can kind of see how you can take certain pieces of each of these edits, and you don't have to do three. I've done as many as five. You can just do, I mean, actually, I don't even know if there's a cap in Lightroom with how many virtual copies you can see at one time, but you can make as many virtual copies as Lightroom will allow you to, which should definitely be enough but it gives you the ability to see what's working, what's not working, and most importantly, it gives you that frame of reference. So knowing what I know now, I think I am going to bring back a little bit of saturation up through here, and I'm gonna, sub I'm gonna bring a little bit of the saturation down over through here as well to the original file, and I think that that is going to give me a, a more pleasing image, and it's gonna get away from the likelihood that I, you know, I finish editing this photo and I come back tomorrow and I'm like, oh, the, 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 the leaves are way too punchy or the, the, the color in the, the trees in the background are, is way too subdued. This is a great way to kind of speed up that process because we all know that when you edit images for a while, you really need to walk away from it because your eyes get used to the way something looks and you, once again, you'll lose that frame of reference. This is a fantastic way to, to get that frame of reference back. And this virtual copy feature is available in, in all versions of Lightroom. So if you use Lightroom, you have the ability to do this just here. Just that. You have the ability to do this right here. So I do hope that was helpful. Like I said, very, very simple technique, but there's a lot of different ways people use virtual copies. And this is by far the most powerful way that I use virtual copies because it helps me to avoid the, the dreaded act of, of over editing a photo. It doesn't hundred percent solve it, but it greatly helps me out as well. And, and I hope it'll help you out as well too. So if you have any questions about this week's video, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back in touch with you as soon as I possibly can. And if you enjoyed the video, if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. Share the video with uh, your photo club, your, maybe your family or your, your friends if you enjoyed it that much. And as always, I really do appreciate you checking out this week's episode and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.